Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the BDFV 85X HD micro brushless quadcopter. This quadcopter was released a couple of weeks ago and upon its release Beta FEV stated that it can support lighter batteries between 2 to 4 cells. However, shortly after it was released, many customers reported that when plugging in a 4S lighter battery, the ESC caught on fire, and that's the reason Beta FEV stopped selling this quadcopter, researched this issue, and realized that it can only support lighter batteries between 2 to 3 cells. So in case you already have one, stay away from 4S lighter batteries and Beta FEV already updated the description to match the current supported lighter batteries. And since I've already flown this quadcopter, I can tell you that you can rest assured that with 2 and 3S lighter batteries, you're not going to have any issues. Inside the box, along with the quadcopter, you're getting a service card and an OSD control board for the Cadex Total V2 camera. So you should keep in mind that you're not getting any spare propellers, and in case you don't have ones, I recommend to add them to your order. The Beta 85X is available in two versions. You can get the HD version, which is the one I have, which comes with the Cadex Total V2 HD FEV camera, and you can get the standard version, which comes with the Cadex Turbo US2 Nano FEV camera. In addition, you can also choose between a plug and play version, which doesn't come with a receiver, and bind and fly versions, which comes with either FlySky, Afro Sky, Futaba, DSMX, and Crossfire receivers. In terms of components, the Beta 85X is using Beta FEV 1105 6000 kV motors, Emax Avan 2 inch propellers, an F4 flight controller, which is located under the canopy, but you can still access its USB port, which is located over here. Next to it, you can find a 16 ampere 4 in 1 BLM32 ESC. The battery is going to be mounted on the bottom using this battery velcro strap, and it's going to be connected to the quadcopter using an XT30 connector. On the top, you can find a 48 channels VTX that supports smart audio and has a selectable output strength of 25 and 200 mV. It's using an IPX antenna connector, and the customized version of the Luminaire Axi antenna is properly secured by using a zip tie and also a black glue on the IPX antenna connector. Finally, on the back you can find an LED strip and on the bottom the receiver depending on the version that you have. The weight of the Beta 85X HD is 74.9 grams, so it's heavier than the Maker Fire Armo 85 HD which weighs 73.3 grams and by the way, I can tell you that even though it's heavier, it flies much better than the Amo 85. And in case you have one of those which I've recently reviewed, I recommend to replace the propeller with the Gemfront 1636 propellers because according to Makerfire, it's going to improve its performance. In addition, the Beta 85X is much heavier than the Mobula 7 HD, which as you can see right now, missing its motors, and it weighs, with the motors of course, around 46.5 grams. The wheelbase of the frame is about 86 mm. The distance between the right motors and the left ones is about 60.6 mm. And the distance between the front motors and the back ones is about 61 mm. The frame itself looks pretty durable. It's made out of a semi flexible material. Its thickness is about 1 mm. And I can also tell you that I crashed it a few times and no harm was done. The canopy is also made out of a pretty strong material, and as you can see, the canopy also provides some protection for the camera. Now over here you can find a cutout for the micro SD card slot of the Cadex Total V2 camera, and I can tell you that after the crash, my micro SD card was actually ejected, so I recommend to put a sticker on top of it in order to cover it, otherwise you might lose your micro SD card. The start and stop button for the Cadex Total V2 camera is located over here, so you won't be able to press it with your finger. And by default, the camera is set to NTSC, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and is not set to start auto recording the video when the battery is plugged. So if you'd like to change the settings, you can use the provided OSD control board, and the port for the OSD control board is located over here, so if you'd like, you can pop it out from the back of the quadcopter, but I think it's going to be more convenient for you just to remove the canopy by loosening these two screws on the side and then simply connect it. The next thing I've done is to head outdoors and test the Beta 85X using these two and 3S lighter batteries. In terms of flight time, I could get about 4 minutes using the 450mAh 3S lighter batteries, which is a pretty good result in my opinion. 
In addition, in terms of range, I got pretty far when the quadcopter was set to 200 millivolts. And one thing that I didn't mention before is that the FR Sky version comes with an XM Plus receiver, which is flashed with the newest version, which means that you are getting the RSI on auxiliary 12. And as you're about to see in the following video, I didn't have any RSI issues at all with this receiver and it performed extremely well. In terms of durability, as I mentioned before, I crashed the quadcopter a few times and it's still in one piece. And I also crashed it on the concrete when I flew inside the indoor parking lot and the only damage was just a scratch on the canopy. Maybe it's just pure luck, but I still think that this is a pretty durable quadcopter. In terms of performance, if you'd like to get the most out of the Beta 85X, I recommend to use the 3S Lipa batteries, of course, but you can still fly it with 2S Lipa batteries, especially if you'd like to record slow cinemop style HD movies. The angle of the camera can be adjusted by loosening the screws on the sides of the camera. However, you will have a very little room for adjustments. And in my opinion, the angle is not enough, especially when flying the quadcopter using a 3S Lipa battery. So a possible fix would be to replace this canopy with a 3D printed one. Finally, the most impressive feature in my opinion of the Beta 85 XHD is that the recorded video was practically jello free. And overall, I think that Beta FV got themselves a winner because this is a very fun to fly quadcopter. It's durable, its range is fantastic. And as I just mentioned, the recorded video is great. Now I'm going to show you the flight footage. So I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions about the Beta FEV 85X HD, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.